very much, Speaker. I'm happy to have this opportunity uh, to respond to the Minister and to, uh, to this bill. We only have five minutes today, but we will get an opportunity, I imagine, hopefully soon to do a full hour because we need so much time to talk about these things, as you might imagine. Uh, I do have a different point of view, uh, one that is radically different from the, the one presented by the Tories on, the, on this uh, uh, bill. But I, but I, I do want to say that I, I am happy that the Liberals keep on taking uh, many of our ideals while, uh, while they attack them. This is a fascinating thing that I've got to deal with on a daily basis, because you constantly have ministers attacking the NDP, the Premier, attacking the NDP daily, and then you see our ideas reflected in your bills, and you wonder, what's going on here? i got to tell you, I get tired every now and then. I, I get tired of bringing the ideas out to you as you whack us each and every time on the very things you put in your bills. It, it's, it's exhausting. I, I just wanted to tell you. And so like, the, the first point is the, and I won't be able to speak to all, all these items because we just don't have enough time. But the Broader Public Sector Executive Compensation Act. It's interesting because the New Democrats, as you know, Minister, we've been trying to cap salaries of, uh, of the big fat cats in, in, the, in the civil service in, in a way that would control the costs. Because I've got to tell you, if we can't find a civil servant that is willing to take 425000 bucks as opposed to a million bucks, I say, send them out the door. That's what I say. And yet I can't find one liberal that will publicly say the same thing. And so you you got an interesting thing here about the broader public sector executive compensation act. But what it does is you're going to compile information from sector to sector, ministry to ministry, uh, organization to organization, you're going to take a whole lot of time to compile all this information. And at the end of that, assuming there's an end, because there must be, presumably after the election, then you will put forth, then you will put forth some regulations that, that will deal with the issue of broader public sector executive compensation. God bless. God bless. Bah. It sounds good. It sounds good that you put it on uh, as, a, as, a, as a, the first item of, uh, of debate, and we'll have more time uh, later on. The, the other ideas having to do with ombudsman oversight, you know, Minister, this, this little guy here has been pushing for ombudsman oversight over so many areas uh, that, government should, that he should be over, and you guys have been saying, no, we don't need it, we have oversight. We don't need yet another idea of the poor, tired ombudsman to have this power over these other bodies because we have adequate oversight. You remember that? You remember that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry to have to interrupt the member for Trinity Spadina, but cacophony in the House means I have to. I would ask the uh, House to come to order, and I'll return to the member for Trinity Spadina. I'll give you a few extra seconds. Copy the clock. Um, and so, so you recall, each and every time for the last eight years, I've been putting forth bills. That our leader, as a former, uh, uh, when when she was a Bada, an ordinary MPP, had bills on ombudsman oversight. The uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Madame Gelina, who uh, who has uh, brought forth bills on, on this very same thing. Today we have uh, the minister saying, "Okay, we're, we're going to do some of that for you." But why does it take eight years? Why do we have to get beaten up for eight years until you finally say, okay? And so we have ombudsman oversight over over uh, the university sector, over school boards, something that I've been pushing for a long, long time, uh, and over the municipal governments, and that's all good. On the other hand, there's absolutely no mention that Fiona Crean, the ombudsman for the city of Toronto, has been doing a great job. And that perhaps we might want to look at uh, at uh, giving her a little more power uh, to be able to do a, a, an even better job, but there's no recognition that she's been doing that. And we should recognize that Toronto is the only city that has one, might uh, consider some, some special attention. Uh, but we'll talk about that at another time. But the other, the other issues that are not addressed by the Ombudsman are the following. Amendments to the Excellent Care Act, where they're going to have uh, a separate Ombudsperson. Do we really need that? 
It's like saying the, the bankers need an ombudsman that comes out of the banking industry, which we have at the federal level. The, we're going to have an ombudsperson who's going to dedicate his or her time just to health care when our ombudsman could do a brilliant job of having that oversight, and we're, we're passing that on. I'll have more time as time comes uh, uh, at the next opportunity. Thank you, Speaker.